MJ Hobby Corner here guys and in this video I just want to show uh, part two of the cavern terrain project and what I'm doing here is actually making a bridge rocky bridge uh, that I can then attach uh, the platforms to uh, this is going to be modular and uh, in this uh, image here you see I'm building some of the stalactites using wire inside the tinfoil so there is a wire skeleton and then I just uh, shape the stalactite and glue it onto the bridge to give it extra detail and I really think the stalactites are what make the cave interesting um, so here is another wire skeleton for a cluster of stalactites and I bend my wires first make sure everything is uh, in order and I, I make them different sizes and then I add some uh, hot glue to the tin foil the tin foil is also sliced in such a way that the wires fit right and then I just bend them all up and shape it and that's the stalactite cluster and I'll I'll uh, use a couple of these at a time you know to add more detail so there it is and there's the bridge portion uh, with a lot of the plastic melted into it and uh, right now I'm adding more bits of uh, plastic bag and then with my heat gun um, just you know melt it up and uh, it sticks right into the structure so it's very cool so here I'm just showing the piece without paint and some of the stalactites um, that are coming off the bottom there and uh, another thing I do is I bunch up my uh, pieces of bag uh, just make little circles and uh, stick them on to the uh, terrain piece just to add more uh, interesting shapes and this is a ledge and here is I wrap the plastic bag chunks around a piece of cardboard and that's what I use and then melt everything up and here is another uh, piece of rock that's going to be attached to the uh, main terrain piece. See, and I'm just uh, about to uh, melt it up. And one important thing is that I use uh, my tools to kind of shape the plastic as it melts. And also I use wire to hold the plastic together. So that's important. Um, and that's what I was explaining here. Also, there's a nice crevice under there for maybe a critter. Uh, this piece was made with a uh, foam skeleton, actually. And then I added the plastic as a skin. And that's what I'm explaining here. Uh, the plastic bags actually function as a skin over that uh, styrofoam. So it's very dense and very. Um, it's actually pretty sturdy. I, I'm very impressed with it. And there's the bridge with some paint. I added some black and brown spray paint as a base coat to the pieces. And I really wanted to show them at least with a, a base coat um, because everything looks better with paint. And I added stalagmites and stalactites to the terrain piece. And I really think it makes a difference. There are some uh, stalactite clusters right there as well. Okay, and here is the piece just with a little bit of a base coating. Uh, still has to be painted, but here are the lizardmen running across that uh, slab of stone, and there could be a river uh, down below. Um, and uh, that's it. This would be like the primary terrain for the board since we're looking at smaller boards, right? But uh, if I have enough terrain, sure, it would be nice to make. A big board as well if we wanted to but notice how those stalactites really give the rocks character really kind of it, it kind of it, it reinforces the idea okay these are cavern rocks that's it all right folks well that's what I wanted to show thank you very much and uh, I'm just gonna give my closing remarks and here's the terrain set with some of the crystals that I make out of plastic bottles I think they're going to look pretty cool all together. So, Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this material and some of the things that I'm learning as I'm working with this material 
uh, these plastic bags um, and melting them so that you get like these exotic kinds of shapes and things to make rock work with. Um, so uh, this was a technique uh, for those of you that didn't see the first video that I learned from uh, Black Magic Crafts. I, I saw that idea about two years ago. He had that video up and uh, he has a lot of cool stuff on his channel. And uh, so I, I used this technique about two years ago with a very small wall piece that I made and I instantly saw the potential that this material has. Now in this, in this video and in the last video, I'm using my own techniques with the material um, in order to work it to my specifications, what I need from it, right? So um, the cavern project is gonna be, it's gonna be a slow process. I'm gonna be adding terrain little by little to this large cavern that, uh, well, not large per se, but I mean, I do wanna have enough pieces that I can um, kind of make my boards different because we are gonna be using small, small boards at first. And then later, if we wanna have a large game, well, I wanna have enough terrain pieces to cover all that. So we're gonna need scattered terrain pieces. We're gonna need some large pieces like the ones I'm working on now. We're gonna need some connector pieces because my caves are gonna have different levels and platforms and ledges and all that stuff. Uh, one of the things that I'm learning is this material does what it does. When you apply heat and it starts to melt, it's very interesting because sometimes when you get the heat gun at a, the proper angle, it constricts and tightens up around whatever it is that you have it right around. And then once it dries, it's nice and tight. And then other times it expands and turns into like popcorn. You know, and so it, it does all this weird stuff. So um, what I'm learning is, of course, I use my dowel and my tools, some sculpting tools to kind of hold it down sometimes when uh, and shape it as it's melting to kind of shape it and have it go the way I want it to go. Right. So to have a little bit of control in the melting process so I get the shapes that I want. The other thing I do very important that I've been learning works very well is wrapping that wire, the floral wire around some of the pieces and sometimes when attaching them to the main structure, wrapping that wire around. Now this wire can come off, it comes off easily. And uh, for the parts that don't, that stay embedded in the plastic, no problem. So, uh, but what the wire does is that it just holds it in place and kind of forms a net over it so it doesn't do the popcorn thing, right? And kind of just, it, so this way it kind of controls it a little bit as, as the piece melts. We, the whole idea of doing all this is for the little people, right? It's for our little people so that we can take the little people into these worlds that we're making and, and play with them, right? The other consideration is the rules, of course. Uh, I am thinking of using one page rules. I think I made that decision uh, in the other video. And uh, Age of Fantasy, one page rules, skirmish rules. It, it's just a beautiful rule set. One page rules, can't go wrong. So I, I'm thinking about using them with a few house rules to kind of envelop the theme of the cave. As I'm doing these rocks, I'm thinking about uh, rock work with maybe outdoor rock work with strange roots and everything coming out of it for some kind of enchanted forest. Uh, I'm thinking about strange alien rocks with all kinds of projections that could, you know, if you guys have seen Aliens 2, uh, Acheron, where Hatley's Hope is located, you see all those jagged rocks and everything uh, uh, across the surface of the planet, you know. It, it has a potential to be used in numerous settings and I'm even thinking about giant trees and fighting a battle in like some kind of elf stronghold in a canopy where the trees are just massive magic the gathering hmm. and then uh, you know use our whatever house rules or whatever and have a battle in these giant trees and make those trees out of this plastic material. All right, folks, well, I think that's all I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna work on these pieces, finish them off, do all the dry brushing now, and make them a little bit lighter in terms of the color, the highlights, 
and then uh, there's a couple of other building projects that I want to uh, do for Stargrave work on that a little bit and then uh, go back to this project and again invest some time in it and get this cavern finished because I think it's going to be a lot of fun all right folks have a great time and uh, we'll talk very soon thank you for all your support and uh, see you soon don't forget rain and hell tomorrow Julie and I are going to be in hell fighting to control it